Thanks so much for joining us here on Nine News Plus. I'm meteorologist Chris Bianchi, and today we're going to get a bit more of a perspective about the yeah. recent rain and mountain snowfall and how that has helped our drought or not from the expert herself, Assistant State Colorado Climatologist Dr. Becky Bollinger joins us now for a bit more of an inside look about, again, the drought impacts we've seen over the last few days, the most recent storm, how we stand also overall heading into the upcoming summer wildfire season, which is different from the winter wildfire season. We'll get into all that here, though. Uh, but Dr. Bollinger, thanks so much for joining us here on 90s Plus Day. Thanks for having me, Chris. As always, we appreciate it. But first of all, um, the most recent drought monitor update came out today. We did see some notable improvements, particularly in central and parts of eastern Colorado. Um, what were some of those big changes and what sort of drought relief did we get? So uh, we all know that a lot of us saw a, a very cold system come through, drop a lot of snow in areas. Other areas, it was closer to rain. But um, in, in either sense, whether it was snow or rain, in terms of drought, it was helpful. Uh, a lot of those areas where we see improvements on the US drought monitor map received about an inch of precipitation. And particularly for our northern front range and northeast Plains, this is what we expect to see in May. And so we are having a pretty typical May in terms of amount of precipitation, which is really good, especially following a record dry April. And so those are the areas where we saw uh, most of the improvements this last week. Any parts of the state in particular that did especially well from this week's, this past week's system? Yeah, again, uh, it was so widespread, which is really nice. And so really we we're looking at um, a little bit east of the foothills along the front range communities into the south, um, like you know Denver, Castle Rock, Colorado Springs area, and then extending out onto the Eastern Plains a little bit. Areas that did receive moisture, but did not see improvement on the US drought monitor map were as you go west a little bit closer to the continental divide. The reason being, while the precipitation was beneficial, there really wasn't enough to justify removing drought or removing abnormally dry from those regions. And so that is where we saw that precipitation did fall, but we didn't see that translate into improvements on the drought monitor map. Well, it sounds like overall some pretty decent news, a little bit, I should say, uh, decent news um, in terms of the drought monitor. How will that potentially limit our fire danger and perhaps more importantly, for how long? So anytime that you get more mountain snows in the late spring uh, in our high elevations, you are further delaying that snow melt process, which is a good thing. And so for some areas, this probably stalled them out from completely melting out, uh, which is good because once you melt out that snow and then the memory of the snow is gone, that is now when the risk of wildfire can occur in those areas. Where you have snow, right now, there's a very minimal risk of wildfire. And so in certain areas of the state, uh, particularly the central and northern mountains, where we got snow, new snow added on to the melting snowpack, you would see that the snowpack is melting, but then there's a little bit of a bump and it stalls out. And so what that does is it delays the melt out uh, that much further. And so while a lot of areas are still going to see an early melt out, um, this really helps uh, delay that a little bit. And that really pushes back that start of the wildfire season. So to be clear, this kind of snow is especially helpful, maybe more than a mid-January, mid-February snowfall because it does notably delay the start of the so-called summer fire season? I wouldn't say that it's more beneficial, but it's very different. So obviously in January and February, if you get a large snow accumulating event, um, it might not have a direct impact on the snow melt, but it's adding to the peak. And we know 
that the higher the peak gets, the less likely it would be that you will melt out early. And so obviously adding snows in January and February are gonna boost up that peak that will come later. A snow event that happens now is not going to have any impact on the peak. We've passed the peak that peak is set in stone and now we're solidly in melt out. So really this one just focuses more on, on timing of that melting. Whereas, you know, the, the January one is really going to be more important for the magnitude of the peak. Gotcha. Okay. Makes a lot of sense there. So uh, with that in mind, and I I'll say this, I personally was a little cautious to say this on TV just because of the, um, didn't want to come across overly negative at times and also wanted to uh, focus a bit more on some of the potential impacts from the snow last week, but now that we've had a few days since our snow and our rain, is there concern about the most recent rain snow being a bad thing in the sense that it allows vegetation to grow and potentially provide more dry fuels later in the summer or in future seasons. Could you expand on that a bit more, please? Yeah, so I would say that, that you are not the first person to have that concern. I think a lot of people are going to have concern because of the wildfires that we've recently experienced. And we know that growing vegetation takes precipitation. And then if you don't always get precipitation, that vegetation will dry out and be that much easier to burn. But, you know, here's the thing is while we do live in a semi-arid state, we are not in a desert, you know? And so we do have greenery, we have forests, we have grasslands. And so having those and getting the precipitation is really overall a net benefit. Um, yes, there is the potential that um, there, there will be a drying out period and that then those areas would be at risk for wildfire. But I don't want us to be scared of wildfire because that is also a natural part of our ecosystem, right? So these are all the things that make Colorado uh, the place that we want to live, right? We in the winter and it gives us these beautiful green forested mountains in the summer and the fire fires are a natural way to kind of keep all of that in check and so while we do need to come up with better management tools uh, for preventing these really large and devastating wildfires, um, overall, we still want rain. We, we don't want to say, oh, I don't want rain because it could potentially mean something bad later. Uh, overall, the benefits of the moisture are going to outweigh the risks. And it's a bit of a catch-22, right? I mean, uh, you either get the rain or you don't. It feels like, it felt to me communicating that at times that it was a challenge in the sense of you know, we want, we've been wishing for rain, now we get the rain, then we say, uh, this is actually a bad thing. Again, that was admittedly, and I'm offering our viewers a bit of a behind the scenes, and Becky, you are the expert on this. I was a little timid to say that because I just didn't want to sound like a perpetual negative Nancy on that. <laughs> it is, uh, yeah, you know what, I am so familiar with feeling like I sound like a Debbie Downer all the time, but really it, it comes down to, you know, realism and not just being negative, but understanding what your risks are and being aware. And so it is good to raise awareness that yes, things like moisture do help grow the vegetation that then could become fuels later. And um, that is something that we do have to deal with in the state that we live in. But overall, um, I say enjoy the precipitation and, um, and try not to worry too much about what it could potentially mean later. Absolutely. Well, with that in mind, I uh, also want to ask you a bit more about the kind of recent amount of uh, uh, extreme weather that we've had and any potential links to climate change. And again, not saying that there have been, and it's, we've always tried to be cautious about linking individual weather to climate. Climate is the wide view, uh, weather is the individual day-to-day -day thing. That said, in the last 16 months, we've seen extreme snowstorms, we've seen extreme drought, record-setting drought, we've seen extreme warmth, and we've also seen some extreme bouts of cold. Um, Dr. Bollinger, in your opinion, and again, this is not an exact necessarily uh, thing here um, with that caveat, would you say in your eyes, you've seen signs of climate change 
based on all the wacky weather we've seen over the last 16 months. I do think that we do see signs of climate change in the a lot of events that we've been experiencing. That being said, they certainly all wouldn't be attributed to climate change. Now, like you said, parsing out which one is due to climate change and which one isn't is not necessarily something that is easy to do. Um, you know, it's kind of like that reference to uh, a, a baseball player who hits a lot of home runs and then, you know, might take steroids and hit even more home runs. You can't you can't know which ones he would have hit or not. And so that's what I like to say, you know, climate change is kind of like the atmosphere being on steroids and, you know, it pumps up a little bit more of those extremes. And some of our extremes are going to become more likely like those uh, very warm months that we saw, like an increasing frequency in drought which we've seen, um, we know that those become more likely with our warming climate. And so those are where I really think we are seeing climate change in action. Now on the other side of the spectrum with, you know, cold events, cold snaps, snowstorms, there is a lot of research going on to try to pinpoint, do these things change because of climate change? Do we see that we have more of these winter storm systems because of the jet stream changing from climate change? And right now we don't know the answers to that. But what I do know for sure is that in Colorado, regardless of the changing climate, we've always experienced a lot of variability. And that is something that we will continue to see. And so being prepared for those extreme cold events that happen in the middle of the winter is something that we we should uh, continue to do and knowing that there is a risk for May snowstorms or a late May freeze, we know that that's going to continue. Um, I have looked a bit at the data to see that while it seems less likely that we experience early snows at the beginning of the cold season, um, for example, in September, it used to be fairly regular that we would have our first freeze or our first snow event in September in a lot of our lower elevation locations. Um, but that has changed through time and has become less likely. Now, does that mean it's never going to happen? Well, we know from September 2020 that uh, Mother Nature likes to throw us for a little bit of a loop. So um, that's, you know, kind of the fun of the state we live in, uh, that you just never really know it's going to come climate or weather wise. Um, but we're seeing some of those trends in the fall, but in the spring, it's really different. It's still very common for us to get these May snow events and these late May freezes. And so that's something that we have to continue to consider, uh, you know, when we're planning our spring events or, or considering how climate change is impacting our climate. Really a good answer. By the way, I really uh, appreciate your steroid analogy. I thought that was uh, especially useful. Um, any final thoughts before uh, we wrap on up? I guess the final thing I want to mention is where the precipitation was most beneficial, we saw improvements, but there were places on the U.S. Drought Monitor map in Colorado where we did not see improvements, where we actually saw some deterioration. And that was a lot over Western Colorado, particularly Southwest Colorado. Uh, the San Juans experienced uh, ridiculous snow melt. And we know this because they melted out to a very similar time period as some of their worst droughts being 2002 and 2018. But their peak snowpack was higher. So this year they had a higher snowpack peak but it melted out at the same time as those drought years. Um, having a better peak is good, but melting out really early, almost a month early is not good news. And so that risk for wildfire, for large wildfires will be higher in those areas. And that is where we're seeing some really bad drought conditions now that we don't wanna forget about. Absolutely not. And by the way, uh, to your point, uh, those areas under a red flag warning today, we saw that new fire start on up near Durango uh, earlier on in the week. Uh, so uh, really valid point there. Don't forget about the fact that, yes, front range, much of Colorado saw a lot of the beneficial moisture, but some parts of the state, unfortunately, left out by Mother Nature. But uh, Dr. Bollinger, we really appreciate 
your wonderful insight, your wonderful analogies, and everything that you uh, bring to the table each and every time we have you on. Thank you so much for joining us here on 90s Plus. Thank you. I enjoy it.